Welcome to Specific Love. I hear a lot of people ask, what are the first tools you should buy as a new woodworker? And looking at all of the expensive tools, some of them costing well into the thousands of dollars, I can only imagine how overwhelming it could be for new woodworkers to look at these and go, what in the world do I need this for? So, let's just keep this simple. I'm gonna list the first 10 tools that you should get as a new woodworker. So, let's begin. Oh, and I'm not sponsored by any of these tools. They're just here as an example. Now first up, I'd strongly suggest getting a circular saw. Now in a lot of these tools, you'll see them in corded and cordless types. So that just depends on what your budget will be. I prefer the cordless because they're just a little more versatile, but the corded ones usually are a decent amount cheaper. In any case, just make sure you get a good brand. Don't have to be these, just do a little research on the brand you'd prefer. You can get several different types of blades, some more aggressive, some if you want a better finish. And the great thing about circular saw, you can change the angle of them, so you can do multiple types of cuts, specifically the angles. You can put a straight edge, you can get a nice, straight, smooth cut with them. You can also usually change the depth, so you can cut several different thicknesses of wood. In any case, definitely get your circular saw. Now for number two, I strongly suggest getting a drill. I have an older style here, which has a corded and the new cordless. Now one of the things, if you're looking at one of the older style, is on the chuck, a lot of times you'll have to have a key, and it's just an extra step whenever you're trying to put in bits or whatever you're trying to use it for. In the newer versions, usually you can tighten it just with your hand here. I prefer this because you don't have to worry about having that key because it can easily be lost. In any case, get a good quality drill and it will definitely come in handy. And please, please do not get on Amazon and buy a $20 drill. It will not last, you will not be happy with it. Go buy a decent quality one and that way it should last you many years. Now for number three, I strongly suggest getting a good quality tape measure. Now you can get them in multiple brands, shapes, sizes, colors. Main things to look out for are the lengths. These are both at 25 feet, and then this one's at 16. Get at least a 16, but I wouldn't go bigger than the 25. You just don't need it. Make sure it has a good clip on the back. Make sure it has a good lock here so you can lock everything in place and you're doing measurements. Also make sure all of the measurements in here are nice clearly labeled and you can easily see them. That way you can go out and use this in a multitude of areas. In any case, get you a good quality tape measure. Now if you can't afford anything else, definitely get the number one, the number two, and the number three. You can build a multitude of projects with just these three items. Just a few years ago, I was visiting some family, and they don't have nearly as many tools as I do, but they fortunately have these three. So, I was able to build them a nice raised dog bed for their two dogs right in their front yard, just using this. Now for number four, I strongly suggest getting some F clamps. These are always really handy whenever you're trying to do a glue up or holding two pieces of wood together to add screws. In any case, a couple things to look out for is make sure there's a cushion on the top and on the bottom you want to make sure that the these nice smooth action here for the quick release and that the twisting here is nice and smooth. So definitely go out and get you some nice good F clamps. Now for number five, go get you an orbital sander. This one just happens to be cordless, but you can get a corded version to save a little bit of money. Make sure it has some kind of a dust filtration or port. You can always hook up a vacuum cleaner to this to help with that. I also prefer the ones that have the Velcro on the bottom so you can easily add and subtract all your little papers and sanding pads. Now this will save you a ton of time on all of your sanding projects. So go get an orbital sander. Now for number six, I would definitely look into getting a jigsaw. They come in corded and cordless versions. I bought this one a few years ago, loved it until I bought my cordless and I just love the versatility and be able to move around with this one. But in any case, get what you can afford. These are great for cutting curves, for cutting circles, and just all around an additional tool to have in your shop. Now the great thing about a jigsaw is it takes wood cutting blades, metal cutting blades, so it can be very versatile. One thing I do recommend is to look at the type of shank that the tool uses. For example, this is a T-shank. It has a little protruding on each side, and so the tool can grab it real snug on each side and less likely for it to get pulled out. So I would definitely suggest getting one that has a T-shank. Now for number seven, I'd suggest getting a speed square. I did not know how much I would use these until I got one. They're great for whenever you're trying to do 90 degree angles on stuff. 
You can line stuff up, clamp one in position, and you know this is gonna be 90 degrees from this. Great thing about it, specifically, if you have the smaller ones, if you're trying to do angle cuts on wood, it has angles along this edge here. You can carefully go out, say I wanted it 10 degrees, there is a 10 degree cut. And that is just an easy way to use some speed squares. There's also a number of versatile other uses for these, but I'm not gonna get to them right here in this video. But go out, get your speed square, they're very, very handy. Now, if you plan on doing woodworking for a while, I'd suggest getting a set of chisels. In reality though, I really only use a half inch, three quarter inch, and one inch most of the time. Now, I don't suggest going out and buying top of the line for your first set of chisels, just because, well, you're gonna be using and abusing them, and you're learning. So, don't get the very bottom of the line either, just because it won't hold an edge very well. Now, once you get them, I definitely suggest sharpening up to you have almost a mirror finish. For example, if I ran my finger sideways across that, I would cut myself. You need them nice and sharp and they work great. So go out and get you a decent set of chisels. Now next up, I would suggest getting a miter saw. In my case, this just happens to be a sliding miter saw. That just means I can cut boards out further. Now, the great thing about a miter saw is that the base pivots, so you can cut angles on your wood real easily. The top pivots, so you can cut angles that way or a combination of both. Now, go out and get a decent miter saw. You don't have to get the top of the line. To get a decent one, it'd probably run you somewhere between two and $300, so keep that in mind. So, go out and get a miter saw. Next up, I'd suggest getting a palm router, or some people call this a trim router. It has a bit down here that spins at a very high RPM so that you can go along your workpiece and smooth or round over your edges so you don't have to worry about sanding everything down. This particular one has a dust port right here in the back, and so you can easily hook up a vacuum, but just be prepared, these create a ton of mess. It shoots wood fragments everywhere. I prefer the cordless version just because of the versatility of it. You don't have to worry about the cable getting in the way of your bit or what you're cutting. In any case, you'll get you a trim or palm router. Now, if you're new to woodworking, those are 10 tools I strongly suggest looking into to get started and possibly using them to make a little money on the side. Now, if you've been in woodworking for a while and you have any other suggestions for those starting, please list those in the comments below so we can help everybody out. Otherwise, get out in your shop and have fun building. What you get good with this? You can get good with this. Quarter in. Dang it. <laughs>